Gentlemen, welcome to uh, week four Beast Boys fantasy football uh, show thing. It's your boy Richie Fox, the Double Orgasm Knights, uh, with core power, 26 grams of solid protein, uh, sponsored by. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go with it, like Jeremy would, like Chris did. I like. I like where they were at. Shirts off. I'm ready to go. Um, some big news. <clears throat> you know, it happened over the last couple of weeks. Fucking trade central. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try to get in contact with these gentlemen. Uh, a normal like ESPN NFL network, they would try to home in and hone in and and focus on the the, the good things, the good teams. You know, like the Rams or the Bucks or um, you know what the you know, Panthers are doing three and zero, but. Instead, I'm going to take a different route. I want to discuss what's going on with the 0-3 teams. And uh, the first person I'm going to call is the Italian meat stack for an interview here. Hopefully he answers. Uh, again, not planned. I never texted him. I have no idea if he's going to answer. Um, knowing him, he won't. Uh, because I actually did text him and he said he would answer. So knowing Steve, he probably won't answer. Just want to go over, um, you know, his his slow 0-3 start. Um... His recent trades. So let's see if I can I can get him on the line. Alright. So Steve, just to let you know. Wait, let me blow my screen up. When you changed your phone number years ago, I couldn't do Steve Friday twice, so you're now Steve Faggity in my phone. So there right, we go. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Thank you for answering. Um, so, uh, you know, you're on you're on the show. You're on the week four recap, if you will, uh, sponsored by Core Power. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Core Power Protein, 26 grams, chocolate, tastes really good. Uh, I get it free from the hospital. Uh, actually, actually, if you don't mind, let me, let me cut you off real quick because I've recently made a little discovery here. Are you away from your phone? You sound very far away. Can you hear me? Oh, that's a lot better. Yeah, well, you know, with the computer and everything, I just want to make sure the fellas can hear you. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I feel you. So, so uh, you know, over the last week at Publix, they've had a little two for six going on. Two for six, on got the, it. Uh, on the hundred percent whole grain garden salsa sun chips. Okay. Dude, I'm not. I'm not even kidding you. I'm on my third bag. Wow. Sunday. Just absolutely. So you heard it here first. Steve has Steve has now discovered Garden Salsa Sun Chips. Dude, they absolutely fuck. Absolutely fuck. Are they a banger? Do they slap? Oh, God, it's fucking tickling my gooch. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you drinking a Bush Light right now or no? Uh, no, I'm not actually. I'm right. sipping on a monster. That'll be a future sponsorship, is Bush Light. But for right now, Core Power Protein, 26 grams. Of straight up protein, only 170 calories a bottle, you know. So low on the cholesterol too, and I gotta watch that. I'm on a statin. Let's get right to it, man. Um, I want to just discuss your 0 and 3 start. Um, how do you feel? Uh, I was just pissing piss for like 30 seconds. You guys hear that? <laughs> they can't. They can't answer you. They're not listening yet. They will be. <laughs> I feel about my 0 and 3 start. Yep. Um, you know, that is what it is. Um, you know, I want to say a big fuck you to Bobby because he got really lucky that Dalvin Cook was hurt last week, um, which is good because you lost. So that's I'm, true. I'm, and I'm always, uh, yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Dalvin I'm Cook's on the trade block, was. boys. Uh, Everyone. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I don't really want to focus so much on my team. You know, why don't we look at the three and O teams and just talk about how shitty they all are? No, I listen, and that's the thing I've noticed is I think they've gotten really lucky and we just haven't. 
Because if you look at all of the, well, besides Chris's team, thanks to himself, if you look at all of the 0-3 rosters, and by that I mean our teams, yeah, I mean, yeah. they are fucking solid. I mean, there's so much depth and Champions just champion. Well, we've proven that over the years. Between the two of us, we have eight championships. So it's, really not a big deal. it's not a big deal. And it's not. And that's why I, I continue to bring it up all the time is it's just not a big deal. Hey, I want to go over this trade with you. And I don't think it's a bad trade on either side. Just wanted to get your mindset. Just sure. to, So this happened last week, Friday, September 24th at 4.24 p.m., the trade was processed uh, again, sponsored by Core Power <laughs> Protein. Um, unsolicited DAC picks um, acquired John Taylor Prescott, which took also your fantasy name away. Hawkinson and Jacoby Myers, you know, just just for the fucking hell of it. And then the Metropolitan Life Insurance, which is no longer Baby Got DAC or whatever it was now. Um, uh, MetLife Insurance. Uh, we got Mike Davis, DK Metcalf, Kyle Pitts, and Russell Wilson. Why? Like, what was so? What was going through your head, man? Because I, I like T. Honestly, it's the TJ Hawkinson that that kind of that kind of stuns me there. What was going through your head on that one? So, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, at this point, I'm 0 two, and you know, Bobby's 0 two as well. And because this was last he week, he's now 0 and three. He's now he's 0 three. Yeah, Go well, ahead, yeah, Steve. I'm now 0 and three. And you guys are playing each other, right? So you're like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, a change needed to be made. Um, you know, i I thought I was I thought I was kind of okay on the running back situation, and I really needed another receiver because I didn't know what the fuck Brandon Ayuk was doing. Um, Not much. Hawkinson, Hawkinson, I feel maybe overachieved a little bit in those first few weeks, and you know, I, I think Pitts could have could have a decent year here. I mean, he is going up against the atrocious Tampa Bay secondary. You know, it's true. Uh, twice this year, he already played him once. Although we did game, just so. acquire, um, you know, Richard Sherman, who is the best cornerback in the league immediately upon entering. That is true. No, that's true. Obviously. Better, he has dreads. He has that going for him. But anyway, you're right. He's yeah. probably going to have a fucking field day. So go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he loves beating his wife. That's always a plus. But you're, yeah, but this is two weeks ago. We didn't have Richard Sherman at that time. I see where you're going with this. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it was it was a change that needed to be made. You know, I mean, Metcalf, obviously, a, a stud there. He I is. He needed a receiver. He needed a running back. And you got the nice uh, stack. You got Wilson Metcalf now, which they yeah, connected yeah, last I week. Didn't, I didn't have a receiver quarterback stack before because Spawn's bitch ass won't give me Amari Cooper. Um, and and honestly. Spawn, fuck off. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Say that again just to make sure he hears it. Hey, uh, Spawn, um, go fuck yourself, buddy. And just for the record, I held my phone up. I don't know where the speaker is. But I held it up, <laughs> hoping the speaker was close to the phone. Hopefully, honestly, I don't even know if anyone can hear this conversation. I'm, I'm hoping they can. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is what it is. But you know, changes needed to be made. So we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I like, I like my, I like my chances moving forward here. Um, you know, I, I think I got a solid lineup. I think I got some solid depths going on. Um, you know, barring injuries. You know, of, that course, of course, of course, bar, yep, barring injuries, still only 20 bucks. So, um, one day, one day you will pay me that 20 bucks. I'm looking at your lineup. You know, you, honestly, Steve, on, truthfully, you do have a good lineup. You're definitely, I, you're going to get some wins eventually. I just think it's a shit start. Um, you know, you had Tannehill underperform. You got Tyler Higbeast, who I, I, I told you I wanted to trade for, but due to the fact that my team is terrible, there's no one to trade you. Um, so I'm just gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I uh, my team is terrible. We'll get to that later on. Uh, so another uh, hot topic, the uh, you know breaking news, if you will, uh, coming to you live at 12:50 p.m. Chuba Hubbard, $99 bid, currently sitting on your bench behind uh, Clyde edwards hilaire and Odell Beckham Jr. 100, 100 yards last week for CEH, right? Let's put that out there. And a receiving touchdown. So that's, that, 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 that's okay. He's trending in the right direction. That's a good point. Um, yeah, you know what? You know, it's 99 problems, but a running back ain't one. You know, that's so, a... you know what? Big, big fuck you to spawn again. Um, you know, I really wanted to stick it to him. And, you know, I, I think I really did that there with $99 on uh, Chubba the Hutt. So I feel good about it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> were, were Bush lights involved at all? Or is this no, just Steve? No. Okay. No, actually, I put that claim in yesterday. It was it was probably yesterday afternoon. 
So as far as I understand, the, the, the highest bid was $53, which was me. And I actually thought I had a chance of getting him. Apparently, I did not. Um, does that make you feel shitty at all that you wasted $40? No, no, it doesn't. And let me let me tell you why. All right. A yeah, lot of a lot of the running back handcuffs are already taken and on rosters right now. I really don't see anybody else popping up on waivers that's going to be that can't miss kind of guy. You know what I'm talking about? We're already coming up on week four here in the season. Yeah, there really hasn't um, been that guy like that Justin Jefferson this year. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe you just got it with Jalen Waddle, but, you know, I, I gave up on Waddle. I saw you just scooped him up. You know, I don't. I think their quarterback situation is all kinds of fucked, and, I mean, Tua is obviously still trash, and he's hurt, and I don't even know who the fuck their backup is. Was it uh, Jacoby Brisket? Yeah, the big brisket. Yeah, so, you know... I, Which, like let's I be said, honest, I, he is an African-American. He's probably not the best quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's like I could have kept on going through the season and, you know, okay, maybe I spend $5 here, $6 here, but, you know, what what am I really going to use the budget on? You know, you got to spend money to make money, and, you know, I feel like I'm making money right here by doing this, so... No, it's true, and you know what? As far as putting him on your bench, Shane Lake, Mr. Double Double himself, once said, you know, I sell insurance, so I want to have insurance. Exactly. And that's what you're doing. You're you're insuring yourself at least for the next two weeks, and then if McCaffrey's hurt for longer and gets hurt again, which judging by the last year and a half, he probably will. Now exactly. You're gonna start in caliber running back. So yeah, exactly. I don't really. Dis- and, you know, I might. <coughs> I might even start. I might start him this week. I might not. Cowboys got a pretty good run so, defense this year. I, I don't know. Here's what I'm. Here's what I'm gonna. T- well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Steve. I'll tell you what. I I would start him. Um, but my opinion means absolutely nothing. But uh, I don't. I don't know if OBJ is worth the start there, and or Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He did have one good week though. He had a good week last week, so you're not wrong about that. But uh, I, I think when it came to the Bucks versus Dallas, we just said, hey, our running backs suck. We'll just throw the ball the whole time. Um, so that was that's pro- that might have boosted their running stats at least a little bit. But uh, I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, I like the play, though. The $99 bid, um, just to basically be able – to clearly say fuck everyone, fuck Spawn. I I, I like that. So, yes, uh, mainly mainly to say fuck Spawn. Um, but you know, you know, I, I feel I feel good about it. Um, all right, man. That was about everything I had to ask you. Is there anything, anything else you you want to talk about? You have the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, we could we could talk a little bit more more about the three and O teams right now. Um. Because honestly, like, let's be honest, every single year, Shane Lake always has the best team. That's you true. Know, he, he says it. It's every single year. We never hear the end of it. What, what do we think is going to be his finishing record here? Who's getting hurt? He's either losing Adams and Allen or one of the two. Yep. Patrick Mahomes is going to go down at some point. Yeah, so for what, sure. What, what is this kid? What is this kid doing? Because you know, everything he touches just turns to shit. It's the truth. I, um, I don't know, man. I think he could... Thanks to Chris, I think he can lose whoever he really wants to at this point, and uh, he'll still be fine. He's definitely going to make the playoffs. Will he win the the championship? He has a better chance than Jeremy. I think we can all agree on that, but besides that, I don't know. I mean, honestly, Chris Russell has a better chance than Jeremy does at winning the championship this year. That's true, and he's definitely going to miss the playoffs, led uh, led by Justin Jefferson himself, Jamar Chase. So, uh, there's nothing like, uh, trading for a guy who has 11 catches and four of them are touchdowns. So definitely trading for the upside there. Um, so yeah, but as far as Shane's team, I think he has, uh, I think he has about a 50% chance of winning this fucking thing. Just as long as none of his guys get hurt. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it's either you're going to win or you're going to lose. So, I mean, I think all of us have a 50% chance if you think about it that way. That's a good point. Uh, I I do not think that I have a 50% chance. So, <laughs> I, I I think my team has been decimated um, by poor luck, injury, and bad decisions in the pool. So, <laughs> all uh, of those... Typically, that's kind of been a theme over the last couple of years. Yeah. So Next year, I think I'm going to have to stay outside the pool until about round 10 and maybe consider drafting a tight end before Robert Tanyan because that guy is absolutely dead to me more than Kenny Galladay at this point. So, um, All right, man. I still got to call somebody else. Um, I think you know who that someone is because 
We're dialing in on the 0 and 3 guys that have had poor luck and deserve to be 3 and 0, not the 3 and 0 schmucks. Yeah, yeah um, obviously. We're the we're the life of the league, you know, we really keep the league going. If it wasn't for us, we wouldn't even have a league, so. That's true. That's true. So, uh congrats, you know, congrats, congrats to you for all your success, your corner lot in Connerton. Um <laughs> <laughs> all of the all of the positives uh thank you for joining us today yeah yeah and you know i just want to leave it on one note um, yeah go ahead you know i gotta say it's a it's a bad day to be a sun shit man I, it's it, a bad day yeah i'm gonna get erased today is third no today's friday what the fucking day is today thursday today's thursday so the thursday, fucking yeah, the, so the deals thursday, at Publix. Thursday, baby. You know what? Here's a bigger question. Um, the deals at Publix have changed today. Are you still willing to buy the Sun Chips for full price? Honestly, I think I am. <laughs> I, I, I think I am. All right. So. All right, buddy. Well, thank you. Um, if any, uh, if anyone doesn't know, was it Garden Salsa Sun Chips? Garden, Garden, 100% whole grain Garden Salsa. So, how much fiber's in there, if you don't mind me asking? Do you got the bag yes. with you? Oh, of course I do. I've been freaking munching on these things all morning. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a great question because I don't even see fiber. Oh, there we go. <laughs> two, two grams of dietary fiber. We got 9% of our daily value. Jesus Christ. So if you eat a bag of those a day, you're at least halfway there. Ah, really, really binds you up. So, all right. All right, buddy. The the Italian meat stack, uh, Steve Fratty, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Lots of useful and good information came out of that, you know? Um, so, yeah, uh, just, you know, I figured I, I like the way Chris did it. I like the interview. Um, we're going to kind of try to do it like this whenever I do do it. Not to mention, I just feel like going the game of the Wii, talking about it. You got a lot of fillers. I don't want to – I just want to, you know, talk about the important stuff. Um, so, yeah, uh, like I said, I am going to call somebody else uh, another interview. And uh, like I said, we're focusing on the 0-3 teams. And there's only one other 0-3 team. And that man is your boy, C. Russ. Um, Chris did not disappoint this year. I, I don't know if he's ever been 1-0 or 2-0. Because each year he's in the league, he immediately trades all of his players away. And gives them to other people. And I, I would imagine you wouldn't do that if you were 1-0 or 2-0. So he's probably been 0 and 1, 0 and 2, 0 and 3, is uh, you know through his entirety here, and he's 0 and 3 again. So um, we're gonna give him a call again. Don't know if he's gonna answer. Uh, definitely did not plan this at all. Chris Russell, boom. Alright, maybe he's not going to answer. I told you I was going to fucking call. It's like, what the fuck does he have to do? Please leave your message for 7279. Oh, he's, he's calling me. He wants to hold the power. Alright, I was getting worried. I forgot to turn my ringer off because I'm off today. I don't want anyone to fucking bother me. Oh. Besides you, obviously. Obviously. Hey, man. So welcome to the uh, week four uh, random recap show um, sponsored by Core Power uh, Protein 26 Grams Chocolate that I have <laughs> I have finished. 220 fucking, fucking calories of greatness? Uh, one seven. No, this one's 170. <laughs> yeah, it's got two grams of fiber, like Steve's Garden Salsa Sun Chips, also oh, sponsored sorry. by them. Now we, they are a sponsor. Just added them immediately. Uh, Twenty you know, twenty six grams of protein. Thanks, um. So anyway, I appreciate the call back. I was getting a little nervous. So this week, I wanted. I know you kind of called me, and it's just a lot of the same people. But this week, I didn't want to focus on the three and O trash that's in our league, which I believe is just spawn and shane let me double check that nope and matt 
I didn't want to focus on those three because, it's let's be honest, they're, it's total luck that they're 3-0. and Their teams, especially Matt's, especially Shane's, all trash. Without a doubt. Um, I wanted well, to focus... Let me, let, me, let me just go on a record by saying okay. I just checked the standings and all three of my losses are to the three highest scoring teams in the league. Not that my team's not fucking garbage, but that's got to count for something, too. You, Do, know? I'll, I, you are throwing out a stat early on. I like that. I like that, buddy. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of shows that you're on the defensive, but at the same time, it's the truth. And I'm not even going to question. You know what? You know what wins championships? Defense. That, and, and you have the Bucks defense. And, and just in case anyone doesn't know, we play absolute trash quarterbacks the rest of the – like for like eight to ten straight weeks. So they should do pretty well. Um, and we have Richard Sherman, who's probably the best corner in the NFL. That's exactly what I just told Steve, too. So it's got to be true if we're saying it, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so what I want to do is I want to dial in on the poor luck, the 0 and 3, cause we should all be 3 and 0. Everyone in the league besides Jeremy should be 3 and 0, I think. And I agree with that. You can do, you can do that happen. You're the commission. Just switch some numbers around. I could. I, I don't think anyone would, would appreciate it. Um, yeah. I also wanted to say thank you for being the only person that realized what me and Spawn did was a joke trade and not a real trade. We were just trying to like... <laughs> You know, be funny, and everyone's like, "Oh, why would you drop my Kevin's? I don't get it." That was the that was the part of the trade that was supposed to give it away, I guess. Yeah, no, nobody besides you caught on to that. So anyway, I want to. I just want to go over uh, just some hot topics of discussion, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to start right with the one that everyone seems to have the biggest problem with. Um, we got the the George Kittle trade. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Let's let's just delve into that. Let's go. I honestly don't remember who else was involved besides George. Oh, and well, it was Jamar Chase. But besides, hold on. Let me let me load up the trade real quick. I should have probably had this ready, but I'm terrible at this. So, uh, all right. So Miles Sanders and George Kittle, and you sent them away for Jamar Chase and Noah Fant. Can you go ahead? You have the floor. All right. So he, here's here's my standard right now. George Kittle. We all know George Kittle is. This this is not the reason I traded the man. George Kittle. If you look at the numbers so far this season, and I don't see it changing, even if Trey Lance becomes quarterback, George Kittle is now the third option in that offense. Whether anyone wants to believe it or not, he's the third option in an offense that's not that good. And once they get their running backs back, they're going to go back to running the shit of the ball, and they're not throwing to George Kittle. Noah Fan has more targets than George Kittle so far through the year. Now, their Denver's lost what two two more receivers? So yeah, they're down here. They did. They now lost Hamler. They lost Hamler. Yep. And Hamler, Hamler just tore his ACL. And that's why Tim Patrick's on my bench. Just my dude. I have such a loaded roster, but we'll get back to that later. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So my thought process was Noah Fant is going to be comparable, in my opinion, comparable to George Kittle for the rest of the season as he was last year. Everyone slept on Noah Fant last year. I Actually, I think Shane had Noah Fant last year, and he put up pretty, pretty fucking good numbers. I, I want to say he was t- tight end five, maybe five or six last year. <clears throat> but Noah Fant... Obviously, an Iowa product. We all know the Iowa tight ends. Hint, hint, wink, wink, George Kittle. They're good. I like Teddy Bridgewater. He throws to the tight ends a lot. So that was my reasoning for Noah Fan. Jamar Chase is absolutely fucking dominant. I watched two of the Cincinnati games. (laughs) You watched two games? Holy shit. Okay, go ahead. Two of them. Two of the three. Oh, my God. That's 66% of the games. That's true. Yeah, that's that's a good number. It's a good completion Thank percentage, you. too, if that was your... Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. It's a good batting average, Not too, hey, in baseball, because that's a that's thing. That's why I think it's a good number. So, anyways, my reasoning here. Shane, we know Shane is stacked at receiver. His fucking running back suck dick, whatever. Yes. He's 3-0 because he's... I don't, know, I don't know who he... I don't even know who he has, but, yeah, I can agree with that. Shane sucks. Go ahead. Um. So, I've been trying to get Jamar Chase since week one. Chase faggot ass wouldn't do it. And Jamar Chase just kept on getting better. So, I also have had Dallas Goddard, who now is on your roster. You're welcome. 
Because I mean, yeah, I don't think Dallas Goddard's that great, but I really wanted to get rid of Tanyan, and I don't give a fuck. Okay. I immediately absolutely. dropped him upon our trade. Yeah, absolutely. So, when I drafted Goddard, I literally drafted Goddard knowing I was going to trade him. That's fine. Moving on. I also had him as an insurance policy because we all know Kittle's injury history, which already he had not practiced all week. <laughs> You're welcome, Shane. Um and that's and that's another thing is I've uh, I was watching the 49ers game and his routes are down. I don't know the actual number, but I I heard it on fantasy footballers. His route percentage is down like 15. percent So he's not running near as many routes. He's blocking more. And I just I, I think George Kittle is more of a name than he is a producer right now. That last game was the first game he's actually gone over like 60 yards, and he's a yards guy, not touchdowns guy. And to be quite honest, I, I, I viewed Kittle and Fant pretty close to each other. So that wasn't a big deal to me. Miles Sanders is pissing me the fuck off, mm-hmm. which James Hanshu warned me he would. So fuck Miles Sanders. So let me uh, fuck that. So I got I gotta give you some credit. Um I just had a nip slip uh on the oh, fuck, I wish on I the computer. Can't wait to see this. So yeah, it's good. It's uh Here's a couple. All right, here, here's a couple things. Number one, I really liked your video in week two. So my shirt is yeah. off. Uh, I like the way you did it. I like the interviews. Um, so I just said, you know what? I'm gonna go shirtless as well and try to spice this motherfucker up. Oh, Number two is actually that was a pretty good explanation of why you did that trade. I, uh, I gotta, I got, I, got, I gotta say, I gotta say, it's. I thought maybe you just kind of said fuck it, but it sounds like it's actually pretty thought out. But here's I mean, and on the Jamar Chase side, I truly, I truly believe Jamar Chase is going to have a Justin Jefferson type season. And at zero and three, if Jamar Chase ends up being a top five receiver for the rest of the season, Chris Godwin has already been extremely consistent for me. He's got a touchdown every game. He's I think wide receiver, I want to say seven or eight or some shit. So if Jamar Chase continues what he's doing, Chris Godwin keeps doing what his he's doing. I'm going to have two top ten fucking receivers, and if Noah Fant is a top five tight end, which he's, I think, six right now, I'm not worried about it. I win that trade. So, I mean, and, and here's Shane, a... Uh, so I lose a running back. Big fucking deal. Miles Sanders has had one decent game, and that was when he got the ball 23 times. So here's here, here's my perspective. Here's my perspective, because I, honestly, this is much more... Uh, well thought out than I thought it was, so I got to give you credit on that. And your points aren't here's the, your points aren't wrong. I just have a totally uh, the opposite opinion. Here's the reason: is uh, tight ends are extremely hard to come by, and so uh, George Kittle, ha- I believe, until last year, had the record for yards in a season by a tight end. The man is good, um, but. I think I made a before, trade with Matt. Before Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk were on the team. So I, I think, well, they, they might have been on the team, but they're always hurt. So when they get hurt, if they if and when they get hurt again, he'll go up. But um, I think I made a trade with Matt probably like five years ago, and it was for that uh, uh, Jordan Reed, I think. And I was so happy about it. I was like, man, I obviously won this trade. And uh, I, <laughs> Jordan Reed ended up getting hurt like two weeks later, and I completely lost the trade. Wait, and, the, and the reason I'm bringing that up is uh, it might look like you lost right now, but, at, you know, in two to three weeks, if, you know, injury happens or Jamar Chase does keep it going, then, yeah, you would you would win this trade. I just don't know if it's going to trend in that direction. And it was – uh, you, know, you know what I – and I don't know if it will either, but this was my thought process. It was a no risk it, no biscuit, baby. As, no it, biscuit. as it should be. As I just be. trade, and I knew going into it with Shane was going to be a very high risk, high reward trade. But at zero and three, what is the point of me sitting at zero and three and being like, "Well, we have George Kittle"? Like, what the fuck is the point? If I can make a move and get a tight end that's comparable in terms of fantasy value, obviously, I'm not comparing no fan to George Kittle by any means. But in fantasy value terms, the output has been basically the same through three weeks. I think that Fant is in a better position in terms of targets and quarterback play and running game. They have a 10 times better run game, too. I, I just prefer Noah Fant and his scheme and what he's got going on right now. And on this, on, on the return, I get a potential top five wide receiver who 
his quarterback in college is playing with him, and his quarterback in college broke the NCAA record for passing touchdowns with that receiver on his team. And every time he, every time Joe Burrow throws a deep ball, he throws at Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase has the most ten yard plus receptions for touchdowns in the NFL right now. I don't, I really don't see a change. I really don't. I think he's probably gonna end up a top five receiver, and. Honestly, for Shane, that doesn't matter because he has Adam Thielen, Keenan Allen, and some other fucking schmuck of hell. Oh, no. Shane, that's why I think Shane definitely won that trade is because his roster uh, has been bolstered. Yeah, and that's but, fine. Uh, and that's, that was, you know, honestly, props to Shane for going top receiver heavy. I mean, he, I risked it on Devonta Smith. He risked it on Jamar Chase. He made the right call, and I think he actually took Jamar Chase before I took Devonta nah, Smith. No, I think Devonta Smith, Smith is the right call, and that's why he's on my team. Anyway, um... Moving on, moving on. You play, uh, you play unsolicited. Un, God, I, I, I don't even know how to say this. Un, Unso- unsolicited dash picks. I don't think he spells it. Hold on, he, he didn't. Unsolicited, isn't it unsolicited? I don't know. He has a hundred education. Oh, so yeah, okay, hold on. No, it is unsolicited. It might be right. I actually, this is, <laughs> this is all happening live. I, I didn't know, I didn't know this was a thing. I, I'm gonna have to discuss this. Un. How would you say that? Unsolicited? Uh, un, unsolicited or unsolicited? Let me go, let me go see if Bobby just spelled it wrong. I don't... Just, no, but maybe he did it for a reason. I don't I don't know. I'm looking at his watch. roster. I didn't think much attention to Bobby because he's a fucking douchebag. Everyone thinks he's really nice. Is that how you spell inside? solicited? Solicited? Am I, have I been saying it wrong my whole life? Someone here... The educational system failed them. It's probably me. It usually is. All right, anyway, while you're looking that up, how do you feel about your matchup this week? Right now, it's, like, basically dead even. It's a three-point difference. You're, you're, he has a... Um, I, feel, I feel pretty good. Um, I, don't, I haven't looked at what Bobby's matchups are. Oh, Carolina. Carolina's defense is pretty legit, man. I don't think Zeke's going to run all over Carolina like he did last week. So that makes me feel a little bit better about that. Hawkinson's kind of slowing down a little bit for him. Elijah Mitchell and <laughs> That was a flash in the pan, in my opinion. Damn, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably put Mike Pittman Jr. in over Mitchell because uh, we yeah, don't even know I who's feel, getting the ball I mean, there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna comment on Bobby's team. That's for Bobby to, so, you know, if he wants to talk about his team, he can talk about his team in the group chat and defend himself. Yeah, fair I, enough. I think Bobby has a pretty solid team. You know, the T, the, the trade he did with Steve. Obviously, he got, he got his fucking faggot pass quarterback back. Prescott, good for him. Um, no, I feel pretty good, man. Aaron Rodgers against Pittsburgh, I feel, is going to be a pretty good game. If you go, if you go zero and four, how many trades do you plan on making next week? Zero. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him. Is there anything? Um, last question. Any anybody else you want to call out? Anything you want to discuss? Uh, just anything at all. You have the floor. Let's see. I mean, Spawn got a little spicy in the group chat yesterday. I yeah. I was at work. I, I wanted to say more, but I was actually fucking working because I have a fucking job. I'm like some of these fucking douchebags. I just sit at home and twiddle their dicks all day. Yep, yep, for um, sure. So I had to wa- I had to watch the group chat blow up while I was, you know, taking down bad guys and doing fucking cop shit. Hero stuff, whatever. yeah. And thank you for your service, by the way. Hey, thank you for your service, man. You're you're a real hero. Um, I know, no, man. I got nothing really to say. I. I I, I love that so many people talk shit about the trade without even doing their own research and looking into why the trade happened instead of just seeing the name Kittle and be like, oh, I fucking got the trade got to get off a new fan. That yeah. actually sounds exactly like me. That's a pretty good representation. Go ahead. So, you know, and, um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it works out and I can laugh at everyone's face and maybe I'm the one looking like a fucking retard in four weeks when I'm 0 8. Who knows? You never know. It's fantasy football, and why not make some trades and spice it up a little bit? If we didn't do these things, it would be fucking boring. So someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. All right, buddy. Thank you for answering. Thank you for your extremely long explanation. Honestly, oh, I, I, ha- I have to say, though, I, uh, I'm i kind of impressed. Thanks, guy. You did not win the trade, but I am I am impressed. Like, you did... That's okay. You did... But if I'll tell you what. If you do win the trade... Like, it was, it's like the Corey Davis thing, like... Week one, I was like, oh, fuck, Chris is probably right. Now I'm leaning towards the, yeah, I know I was right about that. But as far as this trade, I'm, I'm we'll see. You know, you if you win it, then you can basically, you know, come back at me and say, hey, Rich, how about that trade I won kind of thing. So, 
So like I said, I, I, my, my final thoughts on the trade is I really don't think it's a winner or loser unless it's a clear-cut thing because Shane didn't need Jamar Chase. I needed Jamar Chase. Um, and I don't really need George Kittle because no offense, I, I truly believe it's not going to be much of a drop-off. But we'll find out. We will find and out. If I beat Bobby's ass, I'm going to 100% send him a nut shot. And, um, yeah. Go ahead and send me that as well. Oh, I'll send you the full tip. Don't worry. All Stop right, buddy. Control. Thanks again. Hey. I love you, and have a great day. I love you. To everyone else in the league, you can go fuck yourselves. You're all fucking douchebags. Uh, sometimes Steve's cool, though. Mm-hmm. Gotta give him his moment. That's, the guy, King, that, that's the guy you're going to pick for sometimes being cool? Like, we're Neither not... Connor can corner a lot King, bro. I, I, I gotta stick with my people. All right. All right. Uh, you have a blessed day. Love you. 35 minutes in. I could do this shit without Jeremy. Um, if you're still listening, thank you. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear people through my cell phone and the speaker on this computer, which I don't know where it is. Anyway. Uh, good luck to everyone. I don't know if I'll do a video next week. I just felt uh, I felt good today. You know? I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do a video. So... With that being said, peace!